Welcome back to Mycology Exploration. In this video, we're going to show you all the different ways that you can create agar. It is probably the most requested video, and we want to try to answer all of your questions in this one video. We love hearing from you in the comments. The husband reads your comments. He manages our channel here, and then he lets me know what you want to see more of. These bottles make it so much easier. It doesn't matter if you're using Petri dishes and you pressure cook these jars or no pour jars. These bottles are worth it. You do not have to use the stir plate. And if you see this magnet, the white magnet, it looks like a capsule inside. It came with the heated stir plate. In most of our videos, you will see the heated stir plate. Now, being a beginner, when we first started, the stir plate assisted. This heat gun, we highly recommend. Being able to monitor your temperature is vital. So if you're going to invest in anything, we say invest in the heat gun and these bottles. You can create your agar in the bottle or in a saucepan. And you don't even have to turn the burner on. You don't want to cook your agar. And we suggest you use boiling water. So heat purified water in a tea kettle, or if you have to heat it on the stove and boil some water, you can certainly do that. By placing something inside the bottle, we have a magnet from the stir plate. It breaks up the agar, so we highly recommend that you put something inside the jar if you're using the jar. And again, no heated stir plate on this, but we are using the magnet that comes with the heated stir plate. And you know, that's part of the convenience of the stir plate, is the magnet inside your jar is mixing and breaking up the agar and your ingredients for whatever recipe that you're creating. So you can create an agar water. You can create your own recipe. We have so many agar recipes. Or you can get this MEA blend. There's so many different MEA blends that are available. When you're using the heated stir plate, I don't even think you need to use the heat element if you're using boiling hot water. So really, the heated stir plate is just going to be there to be spitting that magnet in the bottle, and you can do that without the stir plate. Now, use some gloves here so that you don't burn yourself if you're going to use the bottle and mix the bottle because you don't want to touch that bottle once you have boiling hot water. It's going to be hot. You can definitely keep your hand on the, the lid and, and swirl it around, but put on an oven mitt or gloves or use a towel so you don't burn yourself. If you're using the saucepan, you don't even have to turn your burner on. Now, I want to show you something. You really want to add your ingredients, especially your agar, first. Once the boiling hot water is introduced to the ingredients, especially the agar, it starts to congeal and it will create a mess around the top of the jar. So I highly recommend that you put your ingredients in your pot or the bottle first, then add your boiling hot water because you're gonna have all this moisture and all this condensation coming out of the top. Even if you're using a pot, you're gonna to have tons of condensation, the steam from the boiling hot water. And once you're placing your ingredients, especially that agar over the top, even with a spoon, it's gonna start getting wet and moist. So you really want to keep your agar and all your ingredients dry. And you want to keep even 
the spoon that you're going to be using in the dry ingredients dry so that it's not clumping up on you. So again, put your ingredients in first. Then you're going to add your boiling hot water. And then you're going to want to stir, 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 mix, mix, mix. So again, you don't need the stir plate, but you would need in the jar something to mix it around and you don't want it to break your jar. And then with your saucepan, you're just going to stir it, stir it, stir it until it's all dissolved. Now you're going to need to pressure cook. So if you do the Petri dishes, then you would pressure cook in a jar first. So the saucepan with Petri dishes is going to make it really difficult <laughs> because you're going to need to pressure cook before you pour to Petri dish. If you do the no pour technique, that's where you pour it to your jars first and then you pressure cook. So you could use a saucepan and a spoon and then pour to your jars, then pressure cook. So we recommend pressure cooking 20 minutes at 15 PSI for most of your agar recipes. You don't want to caramelize the sugars, the dextrose. And of course, when it comes to sugar, we're not talking about cane sugar. It's a dex dextrose. And that would be more like honey. And so if you were to cook on a stovetop, in a saucepan, you could caramelize all that, and then you're going to pressure cook on top of that. So if you use the boiling hot water, there's no need to turn on the stovetop. And again, we haven't even been using our stir plate. And we turned off the heat. So at the very beginning, we used the stir plate, and we used the heat and the stir. And then we realized we didn't even need the heat when we used the boiling hot water. And we just use the stir. And then the husband realized we don't even need the stir. <laughs> he can just mix it in the jar. <laughs> Super easy. And we only do no pour jars now. So what we would do is create the agar, pour it to the jars, and then pressure cook our jars. Okay, let me know your comments, your questions. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. YouTube really doesn't share our videos but we make them for you guys. So share it out. We appreciate you. Much love.